the Warning Mayday in the Making goals and moving forward. I want to have a look at that. I love this band. I love their sound, the freshness of their sound, the rock and roll of their sound. It's great. Let's check out this part five interview. Never really worked with people outside of like a trusted group. My first actual personal interaction was when I met them. They were playing two sold out nights at Mercury Lounge and I came the first night and checked it out and was so blown away. I came back the second night with Jason Plum. Devin O'Connor, our senior and our person at Lava, she invited me to uh, go to a show at the Mercury Lounge. And uh, I think it was a, a cold winter's night and I've been to the Mercury Lounge too many times in my life, but I went and I my head exploded. <laughs> Right. Going from being an independent band to a signed band is a very big, 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 big change. Because we have been independent since we started and we had been doing really well. For years we've always kind of seen where the band is going independently. We started seeing this growth and we would ask ourselves, it's like, how far can we take it ourselves and then when is it time to start searching for partners. We just didn't want to sign with someone who would take control over our music. When Lava approached, it was just like an amazing opportunity for us. The Warning had great touring numbers, great Spotify numbers, great social media interaction. Their fans are diehard. But first and foremost, the most important part is the music, and the music blew me away. At Lava, we like to sign great artists. It's really a simple criteria. When we were approached by Lava, we dove in and definitely found very clear pattern. It was the same sound and look before Jason got him, then after. When they actually reached out to us, we couldn't believe it. And me being an amazing, like, a big Paramore fan, <laughs> I was just like, wow, Jason Blum discovered, oh wow. But when we started talking with Lava, we clicked. We were on the same page. I knew that this was the step that we had to take, that we would be able to, like, to be on another level now. It took a long, 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 long time. We were negotiating for seven months, but we finally did it. Signing with Lava was like a game changer for us. Complete game changer. When we signed, it was so, it, it was just such a big relief. And now with the whole Lava team behind us, I feel super powerful. Honestly, I am so grateful. We're this super strong team. Being the first rock band in Latin American history to sign with a US major record label definitely has to be my proudest moment and every grain of sand that I contributed to that is, is something that I'll cherish forever. That's one for the books. Ever since we signed, we've gotten like so many opportunities. Like we got to record our third album during a pandemic. With the power of a record label, we can make songs for different artists. We can get our songs. I have not put that together and I'll back that up uh, a few seconds. You know, I know they started young, but as they were kind of coming of age or getting that second, third album out, trying to get signed is during the pandemic. Yeah, that must have been tough, man. I'm glad that we've got that behind us, I hope. Movies or anything, like the possibilities are that, endless. Uh, our said. early for different artists, we can get our songs in movies or anything, like the possibilities are endless. Our earliest goals for the band, like we're gonna learn this song and we're gonna rocket we're gonna be on time i mean those are still goals but as we grew like up until now our goals have changed drastically i would just really love to play all over the world and like there have my go. music reach out to like as many people as possible and we would love to you know go on a world tour and get our music everywhere and just kind of like share that love for music that we have if they come into middle America here in Missouri, I'd pay for a ticket and go see this young rock band jam. Wherever we can. I can envision a stadium full of fans rocking out to the warning. If we were able to help make that happen, it would be, you know, just, it, it, it would just be magical. Future hope for the band is world domination. Yeah, we want to tour the world. We want to melt faces, rock out on stage. We want to break stereotypes and show the world that dreams do come true. My goal for them is that they become the biggest band in the world. You know, it sounds crazy, but it's actually possible. It's gonna take a ton of hard work, um, and it's also gonna take some lucky breaks at the end of the day. I think that that is within the realm of possibility. There's no reason that they can't do that. 
our favorite place we travel as a band, I think we have, it's one different in mind. Okay, yeah. okay. Let's just say it at the same time and see if it matches up. Okay. One, two, three. Argentina! Argentina. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Man, so <laughs> hey, Argentina. Argentina is a rock and roll haven. I remember seeing clips of Iron Maiden there, and that place is insane crazy. Argentina and their music, their rock and roll especially, they love rock and roll. Yes. Awesome. It was uh, such a great tour. It was your first time having like such a long tour. We two weeks. It was two like two weeks. Week. It was yeah. a two-week two week week tour, tour with Eric and there. And it was amazing. It Honestly, was amazing. I'm dying to go back to Argentina. The energy so the Argentina different. like public has. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. Agreed. All right. Uh, part five. Let's go into part six. COVID. Once we signed with Lava, we didn't want to lose any time. The band was about to go on a tour, and then COVID hit, so everything that they were working on got canceled. And so they shift the, the, the target immediately to, okay, we're going to make the record now. And David Bendith was a name Might that well. crossed between options that they brought to the table and options that we had seen. Really quickly, it became, okay, let's get him on a Zoom. We had a Zoom call with him. Like there, there was just like a connection. We shared the same vision. We were very, actually very, very excited, very nervous as well, because we knew it was going to be like tough. Teenagers are different than any other band. You know, they're, they're very um, pliable. We were really nervous. Looking back on that call, David was also nervous. Like we see it. And I was like, why were you nervous? Like we were, like we were shaking. You are David <laughs> Bendis. Making an album in the middle of a global pandemic was a very unique experience. We started lockdown in March. We had not left our house until September. We were really respectful of like the safety of it all. Obviously, it was COVID, and the first thoughts across my mind were, how is this going to work? But what we did was we were in the bubble. We decided after a lot of conversations about it that we were going to record it in New Jersey. We did COVID testing. We traveled with seat covers and masks and face shields and gloves, antibacterial and sprays and wipey. Nobody on our team got COVID. We were all very careful and very professional. And I think, you know, that just makes this album that much more special. We were just in a little bubble all the time. I think it kept us really in the Zone. It was definitely scary starting at first because of course the questions come up of maybe if we wait another month things will be safer but it ultimately came down to the fact that the music was ready and it's, it feels urgent, it feels relevant, we want to put this music out. Working with David and Rick was a very um, new experience for us. Actually never worked like this much with people who only talk. They're built to withstand it and so you could push, push them. And so I did. It was great to see mm -hmm. how our different opinions meshed and became this great album. We like really stepped out of our little box of songwriting. And I'm not gonna lie to you, there was moments when it was extremely tense. It was sometimes like, David, like that that's not how it is right now. And David was like, Whoa. Can you imagine though? So they have age differences, cultural differences, but they pulled it together, they battled through thick and thin, arguments, good times, bad times. And it's not how it is right now. And David was like, well, this is how it should be. And we're like, ah! We, were, we had a lot of conversations about how to meet a healthy middle. I guess the best way to say it, it's how you come back from that determines how much you've grown. Working with them was incredible. And I got, we all got to learn so much from the process. I feel super confident about the next steps I'm taking as a musician because I got to learn from the pros. All the work with David Bandit, they were like flesh and and it was amazing. I already missed them. We were with them for like so long. It was it was an amazing experience. I hope that this record goes platinum and we all have plaques on our walls. You know, as far as for the band, I wish them all the success in the world. We know that we have much to learn every single day. There's always something more. My dreams and goals for them is for them to grow as players, to keep writing songs. But my biggest goal for them would be to stay in touch with who they are and never lose that. Our love for what we do is so real and it's so big. Like, why have we worked so hard for so long to just stop here? Right. You're un dia exitoso. Woo! Yay! Un dia exitoso. He nailed it.
So here's what I take from them. So they're young ladies. They're well respectful. They were raised right. Their mom and dad are great. Um, I love their sound. A lot of years have gone by Well, I wouldn't even listen to new music because I'd try it and two seconds later knew that it was, I don't know, just no ear for it or it was fake or it was pantomimed or, you know, uh, lip synced and all that. I love their rock and roll sound, their rock and roll vibe, their energy, they're young, they're the future of rock and roll, I think they'll be fine. I'm Jeff at Occasional Outlaw, glad to finish up May Day in the making, learn all I could learn. Now we'll get on with some more warning music. I'll see you in a day or two with that. Everybody have a good one.